Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the commutator of the raising operator A dagger and the lowering operator A. The raising operator A dagger is defined as 1 over the square root of 2 times x minus d dx. And notice that though it's the raising operator, it has a minus sign in the definition. Similarly, the lowering operator, A, is defined as 1 divided by the square root of 2, x plus the derivative with respect to x. So reminded, this particular symbol here that I'm trying to emulate is called a dagger. Um, it looks somewhat like a cross, except that the lower portion is longer than the top portion. And so this is the symbol for the raising operator. And then there is no superscript for the lowering operator. The commutator, a dagger, a, is by definition of commutators, is a dagger, a minus a, a dagger. Next, we want to write out these terms explicitly. So first we have the raising operator, a dagger, and that's one divided by the square root of two, x minus d dx. And then the lowering operator, a, so one over the square root of two, x plus d dx. And we insert here a dummy function psi, which so makes it easier to see how the operators act. And then we have minus a, the lowering operator, one divided by the square root of two, x plus d dx. And then the raising operator, the square root of two, x minus d dx. And again, we insert this dummy function psi, which is a function of every possible variable. In any particular commutator derivation that we do, we use psi as a stand-in for a function of every possible variable. Next, we can factor out the factor of 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 over the square root of 2, so that's going to be a half. So that leaves x minus d dx, x plus d dx, acting on psi, minus x plus dx, d dx, x minus d dx. And this is acting again on the wave function psi. By convention, operators act on functions from the left. So the closer the operator is to the function, the sooner it acts. So the operator that's immediately to the left of the function acts on it first, then the second furthest operator acts on the function. So first let us act, this operator act on psi, and this operator act on this psi. So that gives us one half x minus d dx. And now these operators act on psi. So the x operator simply multiplies by x. And the differential operator simply takes the derivative of psi with respect to x. So that's pretty much a formalism to write that out. Then here we're going to have this operator act on psi first. So the other operator we just write down, x plus d dx. And now we have these operators act on psi. The x operator simply multiplies by x, and the derivative operator takes the derivative with respect to x.
next we have two sets of binomials that we have to multiply. So that gives us So we have x acting on x psi, which gives us x squared times psi. Then we have x acting on x uh, derivative of psi with respect to x. So that gives us plus x d psi dx. Then we have minus the derivative of with respect to x of xy. Now notice that here we're taking the derivative of a product. So for right now, we'll just write that down in those terms. We're taking the derivative with respect to x of x times psi. And then the final term is we have, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of the derivative of psi with respect to x, which is simply the second derivative of psi with respect to x. So that's the first set of binomials multiplied. And then we subtract from that. Here we have x acting on x psi, which is simply x to multiply. So we have x squared times psi. Then we have x acting on the derivative of psi with respect to x, which just multiplies it, so that gives us minus x d psi dx. Next, we take the derivative with respect to x of xy. So again, we have the product rule. So we have plus d dx x times psi. And then our final term is we have, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of the derivative of psi with respect to x, which is the second derivative with respect to x. Next, we have two sets of binomials that we have to multiply. So that gives us So we have x acting on x psi, which gives us x squared times psi. Then we have x acting on x uh, derivative of psi with respect to x. So that gives us plus x d psi dx. Then we have minus the derivative of with respect to x of xy. Now notice that here we're taking the derivative of a product. So for right now, we'll just write that down in those terms. We're taking the derivative with respect to x of x times psi. And then the final term is we have, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of the derivative of psi with respect to x, which is simply the second derivative of psi with respect to x. So that's the first set of binomials multiplied. And then we subtract from that. Here we have x acting on x psi, which is simply x to multiply. So we have x squared times psi. Then we have x acting on the derivative of psi with respect to x, which just multiplies it. So that gives us minus x d psi dx. Next, we take the derivative with respect to x of xy. So again, we have the product rule. So we have plus d dx x times psi. And then our final term is we have, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of the derivative of psi with respect to x, which is the second derivative with respect to x. We notice the great similarity of the terms in the first group, first expression, and the terms we have in the second expression. So since they're linked by this minus sign, we have x squared psi minus x squared psi. So we can cancel those right out. Similarly, we have minus the second derivative of psi with respect to x minus, so these can again cancel. So thankfully, starting with eight terms, we have now reduced the problem down to four terms. The commutator now has reduced to 
one half. Now we still have two terms in the first group, so we have our x times the term with respect to x minus d dx of x times psi. And then minus, here we have minus x d psi dx plus derivative with respect to x of x times psi. To simplify further, we're going to have to actually work out the explicit derivatives of the product here and the product there. So the other terms we can just bring with us. So here we have x times the derivative of psi with respect to x. And here we take the derivative of the product x psi. So by using the rules of differentiation, we know that the derivative is going to be the first function x times the derivative of the second, which is d psi dx, plus the second function, which is psi, which should carry the minus sign from there, second times the derivative of the first, which is dx dx. So they'll write out explicitly here just so you see where that came from. And similarly for the second set of terms, minus, we have our minus x d psi dx. And now we have to take the first derivative of the product x times psi. And we know by the rules of differentiation, that's going to be the first function, x, times the derivative of the second, so that's d psi dx, plus the second function, which is psi, times the derivative of the first, which, so that gives us dx dx, and I'll just write that out just so you see where that came from. Simplifying gives us one half. Term here is just minus psi. Term in here is minus psi. So here we get a total of minus two divided by two psi. So we had only inserted so it is minus one times psi. Now notice that we had only inserted this function psi just so that we'd have something for the operators to act upon. And since we included it for convenience, we simply remove it for convenience at the end, once we're done. And we see that the commutator is minus one. Now if we had switched the order of the terms in our commutator, if you switch if the a commutator of a b is equal to plus one, the commutator b comma a will end up being minus one. So our value is minus one, but if we had switched the order of the operators when we determined the commutator, we would have found that the commutator was a plus one. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.